Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here, and today we're gonna be going over one hero for each roll, safe lane, all the way to the position 5, that you should and shouldn't pick. 10 heroes in total, and let's do it. But before we get into it, I just want to let you guys know that if you're a Timbersaw fan, and you want to learn more about Timbersaw, I just made a full-length replay analysis, almost 30 minutes, talking about Viking GG Kezu's recent Timbersaw performance. It was an incredible game, and you're going to get a lot of value out of watching that game and learning from him that you simply couldn't do on your own. A lot of people like to tell themselves, oh, I'm just going to learn everything on my own. I'm going to do this on my own, that on my own. And when they don't realize that if you just get a little bit of help, whether or not it's from these YouTube videos, or more importantly, from the website, which you can sign up to right now down below, it will go a lot faster. The process will be much easier, much faster, and so consider it. If you haven't already, or you have your own doubts, give it a shot. There's a refund policy. Watch some of the videos, watch some of the content. If you don't like it, you can unsub. But all right, go sub down below and I'll see you guys there. Okay, so starting it off, I actually want to start with the heroes you shouldn't pick and then get into the ones you should pick later on to the video. Let's do it. So first thing, I always like to give a bit of a disclaimer. I know you guys, sometimes, sometimes some of us, we get a little bit of emotional in the pick phase. We like to say, ah, you know, I, I read on Reddit that Oracle is useless. The hero needs a lot of buffs. Therefore, anytime I see Oracle in my games, I give up. You really shouldn't do that. Just for a little bit of perspective, the lowest win rate hero in Dota right now is Lycan at 45.6%. That's not that bad. That means you're going to lose about like 4% more often, right? Like, it's not that bad, you know? And maybe if it's a really good Lycan game, for instance, they don't have uh, single target damage counters, which sounds weird against Lycan, but right, maybe they don't have a lot of stuns and they only have slows and Lycan runs through all the slows with his ultimate, maybe then in those games he has a 55% win rate. And so a big portion of Dota is understanding when the hero is good or not, and not only just saying it's always good or not. And hopefully this video will help you with that as well. Okay, getting to the first one, we got Monkey King for the safe lane. And as a side note, Slark. Slark, you know how I said like Dota, it's, it's really important to figure out when you want to pick heroes and when you shouldn't. You know, I said that a second ago, that actually doesn't apply to Slark. This hero sucks. Don't pick it, it's always useless, it's always worthless, and really, if you do pick it, you deserve to have someone run down in your game. Honestly, I really do mean that. If you think I'm being facetious right now, I am not being facetious right now. But yeah, uh, in all reality, the, the main hero for me is Monkey King. In the recent We Play Major, it had a 33% win rate. Yeah, not over a huge sample size of games, it was over 9 games, but still. Every single time I watch Monkey King, whether or not it's in my game, someone else's game, a pro game, I just don't know what it does. I will say, if you are going to pick Monkey King, I have two things you need to pick it with. Number one, it needs to be in a good lane against a hero like Tidehunter or Underlord, and it needs to have a lot of teamfight stunts. I really feel strongly about that. Puck, Tidehunter, even a Clockwork, right? It needs stuns. Hopefully long duration stuns, like Cog's a great one, Coil's a great one. If people can't get controlled in your ulti, you feel very useless in teamfights. Very useless. Look for the long duration ultimates that you can play around. Think you're going to do a lot, a lot better on this hero. If you don't have that, well, <laughs> you're going you're gonna to struggle. I just, you just you do so little damage. You really do so little damage. If you can't keep anyone in your ulti and it gets to the mid game, you do very little damage. You farm okay at best. You definitely don't farm as fast as Naga or DB. So you don't have that going for you, and you don't like do burst damage. I mean, sometimes with your ulti, but it's kind of unreliable. All right, getting into the mid lane, we have Tiny. Now, I do believe Tiny still can be a decent space creator. Uh, he's really good at repositioning people, but that's hard to use, and that typically causes heroes to have a lower win rate when they're hard to use. Getting back to my original point, yeah, Tiny, I mean, still can be viable. You do have to just pick him in a game where your mid lane won't be too hard. Maybe you're against um, an Ember, for instance. You're not really going to lose that lane or maybe a Storm. And then against those heroes, you, you'll you get your levels early on and you can roam. You can even control those heroes and, and hopefully burst them. So there's some legitimacy there. But on average, when I watch Tiny nowadays, he falls into the issue where if he doesn't get off to this good start, yes, he can cut waves, but it costs like all of his mana. And you kind of want to rush a blink so you might not necessarily have the mana. And then like you end up getting a 17 minute blink as a mid laner because you wanted phase boots and a wand, which is reasonable and maybe a soul ring. But then your blink comes really late and yeah, um, you do do a lot of burst damage. The hero obviously still wins games, but I just, I don't know. They made the movement speed 295. It used to be like 320, I think, 
was it 3.30 at one point on Tiny? There was a day in which Tiny's avalanche was amplified by three times when the person was tossed. Now it's 2.5 and the hero had like astronomical toss range and avalanche damage. Tiny was really good then. You could watch some of TI-8. That would kind of explain Tiny to you. He literally chucked people across the map and ran around like a race car. That's not the case anymore though. Now he's like slow and lost some of his bursts, which I actually think was pretty key. I, I, I think people like to ignore it because Tiny's really fun to play. I really mean this. I think because Tiny's really fun to play and he like feels good when you get ahead, people like mistake him for being really good. The problem is he falls off quite hard. You know, in the late game, his control is what kind of makes him valuable. Being able to toss someone onto someone else and then avalanche the two of them and then cleave them. You know, there is value if you get that off, but if you mess up or like you jump someone kind of not valuable, you often just get stuck and die. Getting to the third hero, we have Beastmaster. Now we play Major over six games, I know a small sample size, he had a 25% win rate, pretty abysmal. And um, yeah, he's one of the lowest win rate heroes in all of Dota as well. You know, Necromonicon got removed. I don't really know what you buy in the hero. I, I think it's Medallion, I think. Maybe Axe, maybe? It got nerfed like three times. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I, I just don't recommend picking him, guys. I don't even know when you pick him, to be honest. I guess if they can't deal with units. Like, he's actually pretty good against heroes like AA, to be honest. I, I actually think it's a decent response pick to this current AA, because you get you give the vision to jump AA, which is pretty key. And um, he all, AA also can't deal with your units, so maybe there's some legitimacy there. Buy a, buy a Helm Dom and a Solar Crest to run around. Then for the position four, we have Io. I know, I know, you watch GH, and he's playing with LTW, and they're running their strat, and it looks really good, and you're like, wow, I can do that in my game as well. No, you can't. No, you can't. You're not GH, and your carry is the furthest thing from my LTW. I hate to break it to you. Actually, you probably feel that way already. You probably yell at your carries every game. And Io really needs a carry to play around. Okay, I do like Io Mech. Mech is really cheap. I think Io Mech is actually looking pretty nice, and then you buy a Holy Locket, you heal for a lot. There is some legitimacy there, but as I said... You kind of need teammates, and you need, really need to know how to play this hero. The only reason why I think Io has a decent win rate is because the main people who pick Io are Io spammers, which makes the hero's win rate go up. For instance, if you look at a hero like um, like Viper, a lot of people pick Viper, right? Uh, or, or, or Legion, a lot of people like to pick Legion. The problem is, then all the noobs who pick these heroes because they don't know what else to pick when they get mid or offlane, end up grafing the win rate. Because they don't know what they're doing. You ever had that guy in your pub who's like, Uh-oh, I, I, I was trying to get uh, some roll queue games and I happened to get mid. I'm actually a safe lane player and um, I have no clue what I'm doing. I'm going to pick Viper, I'm going to do my best, and then they like don't do well in the lane. They don't scale and you lose. That kind of hurts Viper's win rate, even though I think the hero is like, relatively busted right now. I, I actually feel that way. Yeah, that hurts. And then finally is Grimstroke. I probably don't have to convince you on this. The hero's win rate in pubs is like generally bad. It requires synergy. It requires like really good understanding of like when to cast spells, including your silence, including your ink spell. If you cast them at the wrong time, they don't do anything. Even your ultimate to some extent, your cube is hard to hit. However, <laughs> theoretically, which is why pros always pick it, even though it went 10 and 15 in the major, is because some games, it feels like the most busted hero in the game. As a position five, you literally can feel like you solo win a team fight. If you silence two heroes, leech two heroes that really need to use mobility spells, hit a four second stun, and then do a bunch of damage from the back line. By the way, if you have an Ags, you can turn a, a, a Wraith King into your own Wraith King and then one shot a bunch of people. You can feel like you solo carry the fights. However, if you fall behind, don't get a bunch of levels, and mess up your spells, which you probably will, you also feel like potentially the worst hero in the game. Actually, more often than not, I think that's kind of what it is. <laughs> but uh, yeah, be careful about Grim. Um, I do think he works with Jug and, you know, PA in the lane and, and Grim. But honestly, even a lot of the Jug counters, maybe they feel a little bit... I mean, uh, a lot of the uh, Grim combos feel a little bit out of the meta right now. Kind of seems a little bit to be more greedy heroes rather than uh, the jumpy ones. Not that you can't play them. Okay, let's get into the heroes you should pick. Terrorblade, one of the highest win rates in the Play Major, really seem to come into play later on into the tournament, but let's get into it. So Terrorblade had a 68% win rate in the major and still seems to be getting picked a lot. And I know a lot of those wins were just Arteezy and he is the best in the world, but I really do feel that the hero's landing stage is super solid. Reflection is actually a much better spell than I even realized personally. It's only 35 mana, really easy to spam, does a lot of chip damage, it's a slow. 
combine that with your metamorphosis and you actually do dominate the lane. I highly recommend if you do want to play Terrorblade, go watch a Terrorblade game, pay very close attention to when they pop meta, whether or not it's in the laning stage or to farm and how they farm. And often this hero is going to hit some critical mass timings that are almost impossible to deal with. Dragonlance right now is in an incredible spot as well. That item was buffed and I think that is the best Terrorblade item in the game. Even though there are games where pros don't buy it, I think it's almost always uh, a buy. Um, I really do feel that way. I, I think it's even underrated by certain pros in, in games where they think they don't need it. But yeah, it looks like it's in a good spot. It's really good at flash farming on both sides of the map. And a lot of mids and offlaners seem to be keeping tempo right now. Uh, not too much greed from the offlane as I've seen. A lot are being much more sacrificial. And even in the mid lane, we're seeing a lot of pucks and, and spirits and invokers and things like this. Uh, Razor was a hero that actually did well mid. Dragonite was a hero that actually performed very well. I'm not going to be talking about him, but, you know, that's a hero that was doing very well over a huge sample size of games. And, um, yeah, let's get into the next one. Then we have Puck. I'm really not going to talk much about Puck. It just always does well. It, it does fine in lane. It's fine team fight. It roams fine. If you need to survive, buy an Aeon Disc. If you don't, uh, buy a Witch Blade and then an Axe. And if you also need to survive and they don't have, like, too much chain lockdown, you can go Kai Assange with a Witch Blade and then you out-sustain everyone and you're, like, to the backline and it's really fun. It really is a lot of fun. Tidehunter for the offlane. Huge fan of this hero right now. I think it is really good. I don't know why. Every time I watch Tide, it just looks good. It's a great laner, right? It can adapt to whatever lane it needs. Oh, am I against an Ursa? Okay, I take Gush with the Marana. I arrow. I mean, I Gush, then I arrow, and then the Ursa's like half HP and dies. Or doesn't die, and then dies to the next combo. So you can adapt in that way. Physical damage hero? Okay, I take Anchor Smash. Right, that's the problem. Maybe it's a Lycan or a Prophet. Anchor Smash him with Kraken Shell. Bada bang, bada boom, you know? Easy lane. And then, uh, yeah, it just seems to work very well a lot with these uh, hard, 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 hard carries. Couple examples. I like the Prophet with the Tide Hunter. Huge fan of that combo. Terrorblade with the Tide Hunter. Uh, I like Naga with the Tide Hunter. Drow, I think, is a nice, right? Nice hero. And uh, even TA as a mid lane carry is really nice with the Tide Hunter. Then, as a position four, we have one of the highest win rate heroes of the entire tournament, and that's Hoodwing. That hero was picked 14 times and won 11 of the games. And really, it does seem like a, a very strong hero. I would like to say that on Dota buff, it also has a positive win rate. It has a 51% win rate, which is pretty good. And a big reason why I think this hero is so good is because it provides that break. There's really just not a lot of good breaks in the game, and you can't buy Silver Edge right now. Like, that item is completely unpurchasable. It, uh, I don't know what else to say. It's like Shadow Blade and, and a, an Oblivion Staff, like... And a, and a massive ass recipe it's just so unbuyable it really is like if anyone tells you that oh there's a bristleback on the enemy team like we need to buy a silver edge if you're gonna buy it like third item to try to counter a break you're probably just gonna grief yourself even though i actually think shadow blade is an underrated item i really do uh, especially in pubs um it's just uh, oblivion staff man really just make it echo saber again and then the item will be actually quite good on top of that, the hero is actually a very good laner. Acorn Shot does some like stupid amount of damage, if, especially if it bounces. Like if you catch two heroes together, man, the damage is insane. And then Hoodwinked, Bushwhack, yuck. Also, it's self-sustainable. It doesn't die and it shoves ways. I really do believe that Hoodwink, if you know how to play it and like you're really good at shoving ways, it also can become like a semi-core as a four. And wow, this hero, when it gets some items like Yules and Aether Lens, it can just, I mean, it feels impossible to kill. And the cooldown on the Bushwhack, the level 10 talent, so many stuns on such a low cooldown. And finally, last but not least, we have Phoenix and Edge. I want to put it out there. These heroes do not have good win rates in pubs. Overall in pubs, not good win rates. Actually, Edge is one of the lowest in the game. Now, that is because people are bad at Dota. I really mean that. Edge requires micro to be good. Most people can't micro. Phoenix requires you to be able to hit spirits when people are moving and be able to throw spirits in various directions during a team fight. Most people can't do that. However, if you can do that, you'll be really good at the game. If you learn how to have really good fight awareness so that you can egg in a position that baits out the enemy team to hit it, but also doesn't make you get killed, you'll win the team fight single handedly for your team. Then you buy the shard. I didn't even know until recently. Phoenix shard is Sunray Wild Supernova. That is so busted. I actually think it's so busted. It's so much damage, guys. It is so much damage. At minute 20, when you egg and you sunray, you can actually just like 
solo kill people. Sunray's like a, it really is a busted spell. If you buy a holy locket as well, and then you, you, you get a good egg and like on a hill that's going to stun heroes. And then you Sunray like a high HP hero during the fight. You've won the fight for your team. You've won the fight for your team. It is so busted how good Phoenix can be in team fights. The problem is, is that if you don't have good patience and don't have good awareness and you get jumped and you can't get off a good Sunray and then you just panic egg, things are bad. If you egg in a bad spot, well, I don't really have to explain why that's bad. And then the same thing is kind of for Ench. People play this hero like a wuss. If I go do an Ench analysis on a low MR game, they're just going to walk around their jungle and not do anything. You need to put yourself out of position. You need to go out of position. You need to get run at by three heroes 10 minutes into the game when you have your ultimate or 11 or 12. You need to push in side lanes and run at course when they're split pushing. But you, you know what? People aren't going to do that. You want to know why? Because what do people do in pubs? They run around and five man and team fight. That is not what Ench loves to do in the early game. She's not one of the best team fighters. You want team fight? Go pick Winter Wyvern. You want team fight? Go pick uh, Phoenix, actually. <laughs> go pick Phoenix. Don't pick Ench. But if you do pick Ench and you get good at the micro and you get really good at creating space for your team, like in a useful way where you beat two, three, four, five rotations. Trust me, you can do this. If you are in Herald, you can make three heroes chase you across the map for a minute. I should literally go get a smurf. I, I know dislike, 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 but I should go get a smurf on a Herald game and just try to show you guys that I can make three heroes chase me around the map probably for two minutes straight. And that's likely not an over exaggeration. Why? Because people go for kills. They don't understand how, you know, chasing an inch around the map for two minutes is not a good thing and will make you not hit your timings. And then also you can solo kill cores 10 minutes into the game, 15, 20 minutes into the game. Don't believe me? Go try it. But you have to know how to farm and micro and split and bait and buy your own wards. And that's not easy. But nonetheless, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And uh, yeah, like, like the video and I'll see you in the next video. Hopefully you click the one that's recommended. If you don't, I'll see you tomorrow. Peace. And that's all. But remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below and I'm out. Peace.